It's first chapter Friday once again. This week I'm going to read the first chapter of Polo Cowboy by Jean Airy. It's a short chapter, so I'm going to read the front inside flap to you. How did a black kid from North Philly wind up playing polo? When Cole moves in for real with his dad Harp, he thinks life will be sweet, just him and his horse Boo hanging out with the cowboys at their stables on Chester Avenue. But when Harp tells him that he has to get a job, he winds up as a stable hand for the polo team at George Washington Military Academy, a totally different world from that of the black urban cowboys in North Philly. The players are rich, white, and stuck up. All except Ruthie, the first girl on the team who's determined to show the others that she can beat them at their game. The last thing Cole wants is to get dragged into a fight that isn't his, but he and Ruthie become friends, and maybe more, as they could become friends. He starts learning about polo and imagining a future for himself, maybe even at the academy. But does Cole have the courage to stand up and be seen in a world that's determined to keep him out? Here is chapter one of Polo Cowboy, a novel by Jean Airy, illustrated by Jesse Joshua Watson and published by Candlewick Press. It is like illustrated throughout, so I'll show those illustrations when they come up. Chapter one, Mama is fuming. Say that again. I swallow and take a deep breath. I ain't going back to Detroit. Five minutes ago, he was celebrating. We were celebrating. I almost beat Harper in our first horse race, even though I'm pretty sure he let me get that close. Mama's here visiting and we all, we was being all family-like again, laughing and telling jokes at the speedway in the middle of the biggest nature park in Philadelphia. It was a great day, but then she asked me when I was gonna come back home again, home. Ever since I came back to Philly to stay with my dad for the summer, I only felt one thing. This is my home now where my horse Boo is, where the fellas is, where our stable the Ritz Carlton is. The Ritz may have been just a rundown garage before, but to us this barn is like the fanciest hotel in the neighborhood, the place to be and be seen. So that's why we call it that. It's my real home, not Detroit where mama lives. I didn't want to say that out loud, but she kept asking. Now I swear her eyes is going to drill a hole through my head. You the one who brought me here in the first place, I say to her, to her stare. It was only a year or so ago, and I know she remembers. Who forgets ditching their boy on the doorstep of a daddy he's never met? She sighs. I thought we had a deal. Summer's here, school year back in Detroit. Deal schmeal. I want to go to school with my friends here in Philly. That's not exactly true. Most of my friends is cowboys or small kids who come to the stables to learn. So I confess the real reason. Besides, Boo needs me. That don't sit right with her. Boo's a horse, she say. I need you. Then move back to Philly, I say. You getting along with Harp now? We, why can't we be a family again in Philly? I can tell that knocks her for a loop. Life don't work that way, Cole. I can't just pick up and leave my life behind. I got a job, responsibilities. I can't just go back to a relationship that's been dead all these years. It's not that easy. I don't want to hurt her feelings, but truth is, I am happier here. <clears throat> and she knows it. We stand there for a long time thinking what to say next. Who is eating grass behind me? Harper, my dad, even though I don't like to call him that, is on his horse waiting for us to leave. I don't want mama to go, but standing here just makes it harder to say goodbye. What about your future? She asks. What about it? <sighs> she sighs. World's a tough place, Cole. Ain't got no room for young black men. You gonna end up like your cousin Smush or make something of yourself. I look over at Smush who's rolling dice on the basketball court. He's a dropout and sometimes corner boy who always, who's always finding trouble even when he's helping out. Then I look at Harp and the other horsemen getting ready to ride back to the neighborhood. What's wrong with being a cowboy? She almost laughs. Being a cowboy isn't a job. Plus, It'll suck up any money you do manage to make. Just ask your dad. Your only hope is to find a way to college. College? Why I gotta be thinking about college? I'm only 14. What's that gotta do with staying here? She glances over at Harp. I'm not so sure your dad is thinking about your future. He's not even thinking about his own. 
I stare at the ground for the longest time trying to find the words. I want to tell her I love her, that this ain't got nothing to do with the past. Instead, what comes out is maybe, but I still want to stay in Philly. She stares at me like she's trying to read my mind, like she's trying to see if I really feel that way or if I'm just being a teenager. And she laughs, but not in a funny way. You're just like your daddy. Love that horse more than me. She turns to leave and it feels like she just put a knife in my back. Wait, I say. She stops, shakes her head. I grab her from behind. She sighs and pulls me into a bear hug till I can't breathe. I love you too, she says. Then she walks away before we both lose it. Hmm, interesting. I can't wait to, read, wait to read more. I know you can't either. Check it out from the Alameda Free Library and see you next time.